and we're live. Welcome to episode 225 of the Mailworks Chain Mail live streams. My name's Sean. I run mailworks.com. And normally I would have shared this by now, but uh, having quite a moment. You'll notice there's no music, and I don't know why. Uh, let me share this real quick, and we will get started. Um, my computer probably needs to be restarted. That's the first thing I can think of. Um, and then the other thing I can think of is that just something's just wrong with uh, my setup, how it is right now. So, I don't know. Let me try. Nothing changed. Right? Music is playing on my computer, but there's no... No music. So weird. Everything worked fine last night, and I haven't touched anything, as far as I'm aware. Anyway, how is everyone? How are you doing? We're gonna we're gonna finish up this jelly cube right now. So what did you guys get up to today? Let's see here, I started a new website build. And there's not been a lot of uh, solutions to what I was looking for. Technology giving you attitude tonight? It sure is. It sure is. And I didn't realize it until I got down here. So now I'm down here. Um, nothing changed since last night. So can you hear me? Do I at least have my microphone on? I at least have my microphone on this time around. But that's okay. We don't need no stinking music. All right. So we should be able to finish up this layer. And I think we're going to call it quits on uh, this jelly cube after that. You got your car fixed. Congratulations. Ended up walking home from the shop to work in the rain both ways. That's no fun. But I'm glad your car is fixed. That is good to hear. I have I have a blinker that's doing the quick, fast, blinky thing, and I got to get in there and change out the fuses. The light bulbs were already changed out, so pretty sure it's the fuses. And then my rear defrost doesn't work. And we got to change out the fuse on that. So, I don't, I don't do uh, much car work. Hey, Barb, how you doing? I'm not a mechanic. I'm somewhat mechanically inclined in that I can generally fix a vacuum or a, an appliance. I can at least look at it before. I call in a repairman, um, and I'm competent enough to YouTube quick fixes. So I can handle a fuse change, I think. Rather wet hugs tonight, still trying out from having to put your feet on wet pavement. Yeah, it's, it's nasty out there. It's been nasty outside all day. So I can tinker with stuff and try internet solutions, but I by, by no means am I competent at it. So, but fuses I'm pretty sure I can handle. And if it's anything beyond that, like if there's a short in the wire that powers the rear defrost, I'm screwed, right? Like I have to take it to my brother-in-law and have him and his crew fix it because they are professionals. What else is there's something else I got to do? I'm trying to think of it. There's one other thing going on with my truck that is a simple fix, and I just haven't. I need to put air in the tires. Is it? I think it might just be air in the tires and fix the 
change out the fuses. <coughs> it is not snowing where I am. Is it uh, snowing where you are in Winterpeg? Happy Star Wars Eve. Tomorrow is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. And also with you. No snow. No snow, just rain and mud. Just rain and mud. I had uh, I have a neighbor that has a very uh, large Irish wolfhound. Mm -hmm. And they go for walks around the block. And this guy has become a... He's a very friendly dog to begin with. But he's enormous, right? Like, his shoulders are above my hip. I'm five foot nine. Right. And this dog is, uh, he's just a ridiculously large dog. And they came over tonight. And it's just funny seeing how much space he occupies in my garage. Just this large animal calmly walking into my garage. You know, he's on a leash and his owner's there and everything. But uh, he knows he's going to get snacks when he comes over, so... He sees us outside and just walks right up like he owns the place. Mm -hmm. Think you need to bail from Winterpeg? Yeah, come on, come on down to the states. Gonna take my kiddo to baseball tomorrow night and all the fields are gonna be soaked in mud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could clean out the prop room, put a bed in there. Nice. No, nope, there's uh, mm -hmm. there's every reason in the world to to bail from snow. Any chance I get to get away from it, I do. I'm just appalled at this spring's weather so far, because it's gonna go from 40s, wet and rainy, to 90 degrees with 100% humidity where I'm at here in, I don't know, a week, maybe two. It's just going to be god awful. But yeah, work on, work on another website. Um, worked on another project for uh, for another store for someone else's store um, it's a good day I got a lot done I got a, I got a lot done on my next project right where I provide a service to people in order to put food on my table. So, yeah, we'll go straight from I'm stuck in the mud to I'm melting, yeah. Our summer schedule for Wednesday, June 15th. That's how it goes. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the cold, the wet, and the rain to just, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I want to start bitching about 90, 90 degree weather with 100% humidity. <laughs> Tired of bitching about cold, muddy weather. But no, it should be good. It 
Should be a nice change. We did have some like weather in the 60s and I want to say it was in March. It was real nice. You have it scheduled or just kind of sneaks up on us and then beats the crap out of the entire state? Yeah. nice it was a nice productive day got a lot of stuff done At some point in time this week I need to clean hard to get to cleaning when you're being so productive and tonight tonight it was all about taking away Fortnite from my seven-year-old going on 20 we give him an inch of freedom and he thinks he's in charge. And it's like, no, buddy, that's not, that is not how this works. Like anytime someone would tell him no, he starts, he was screaming and crying and acting like the world was ending. It's like, okay, cool, you're going to get the ultimate no now. You're going to find out what it's like to have stuff taken away. And you're gonna to learn to be okay with it because when that happens as an adult and you act this way, completely unacceptable. I realize he's seven. No, global climate change isn't real, it's just a marketing campaign dream but by to Toyota to make us all buy Priuses. Yup. The Priuses that require, I don't know, are, are Priuses, aren't they a hybrid? I know that for Teslas, the chemical components in the battery like there's not enough lithium to make enough batteries to replace all the cars in the world so they're gonna have to figure out different battery technology they use something more abundant you think they are hybrids I think so too I don't know I've never owned one or driven one. But I would absolutely not put it past a corporation to come up with a marketing campaign like that because as we know um, the sugar industry paid off doctors to blame fats for people's health problems. Um, what's another good example? What was the fruit company that took over a country, like performed a coup in a South American country for their bananas and then put up a puppet dictator, which is why we call it banana republics, right? Like I'm, I'm not on the side of all corporations are evil, um, but I think some corporations are definitely evil and shady enough to put out bad information.
speaking of bananas, I saw a meme that was had a picture of some really old bananas on there. And the caption was something like, you're not going to make banana bread. Just let them go. <laughs> and of course, I thought that was hilarious because we often have frozen bananas in the freezer. And they occasionally they get made into banana bread. But I think we have some in there right now. My kid likes bananas. I do not. They are by far my least favorite fruit. I will eat one like once every two or three years just to remind myself how much I don't like them. You seen that meme? You've been that meme? Yeah. Like I'd like to report this because I'm in it and I don't like it. Anything makes you gag? Me too. I like almost any other fruit. But bananas are... You like bananas occasionally? Lots of sugar in the phallic fruit? watermelon I'm a meat and cheese kind of guy I don't eat a lot of fruit if it's peeled or cut up and readily available sure that's one thing like a fruit tray I'll tear that up but if I have to go through the effort of getting it ready to eat myself yeah no it's probably not gonna happen It's like, I will eat my fruits and vegetables if it's, you know, piled on a tray and ready to go. And that, I think that stems from my absolute hatred of doing prep work for anything. So, kiwis are outstanding. The only fruit you detest is watermelon. I grew up on watermelon, so... And, and you know what, actually, me not wanting to eat fruit um, that's not, like, ready to go might also be because my grandma, when I was growing up, used to always have fruit available. Grapes, watermelon, oranges, apples, whatever. And she would cut it all up for me. Maybe she spoiled me, and that's why I don't like prepping my own food for or why, why I don't like prepping my own fruit. They're tasteless, seedy, mushy mess. You dislike the texture, like overripe pear. The grittiness is not to your liking. I have never had a watermelon that was gritty, but you're all about the berries, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, kiwis, oranges, and raspberries. Renee doesn't like mushrooms. It's a texture thing for her. Flavor's fine. The texture's an issue. I, I'm trying to think of a fruit that has a texture I don't like. 
or that I would think of as gritty, you know? I don't know. Nothing comes to mind. To quote the Princess Bride, nothing comes to mind. Same here with the mushrooms, they're slimy. They're amazing. You eat cherries by the pound. They are good. They are good for your gout, yeah? Bard loves mushrooms. Right on. Go team mushroom. Cherries and grapes and berries that are like ready to eat, no problem. Apples and oranges, like I can eat an apple. I won't, but I, I can. Oranges, I won't eat because you gotta peel them. I mean, occasionally, but nah. Cooked fruits are gross. Only ones you like is apple tarts. None of that garbage, soggy bread, crust of pies, bro. No. I had some cherry pie the other day. It was awesome. I think my favorite pie, which I don't, I have two, pumpkin pie, right? But when it comes to, well, no, no, it's not that. Um, I think my favorite pie is rhubarb pie, which if you never had it, is a great pie. Um, but I get pumpkin pie a whole lot more. Like if I get a chance to have some pumpkin pie, or sweet potato pie, man. But we did have some cherry pie the other day. Speaking of that, we have some cake in the fridge. I am not a person who eats a lot of sweets in general. Um. I'm not prone to like buying candy or any of that. <laughs> but for some reason, whenever we have cake or pie or ice cream or whatever in the house, it's like nobody else eats it and I don't want food to go bad, so I end up eating it. Pumpkin is squash, so it's good as pie, but graham cracker crust is required. Interesting. Your team pineapple too? Nice. Pineapple on pizza? I love pineapple on pizza. I never I never knew that there was an issue with that. And I think that I It's like pineapple on pizza is like disliking Nickelback, okay? Um Nickelback was decent band, had some good songs, right? Um sure kind of generic whatever. Uh, I've been to a Nickelback concert. They were playing with Seether. Seether was opening for them. And they put on a great show, right? And I think the internet made it popular to hate Nickelback. And it made it popular to not like pineapple on pizza. I can understand people legitimately not liking pineapple on pizza. But I don't believe for a minute that there is as many people... That, that there are as many people that don't like pineapple on pizza as there would have been if the internet wasn't around. I think everyone else would have, you know, had they never saw that it was cool to hate on pineapple pizza, or had they never saw that it was cool to hate on Nickelback, they never would have, it, it never would have popped up in their minds.
Pineapple is good cooked. Falls under cooked fruit and it's gross. Fresh sliced on a bacon pizza though, that'll devour. You can pretty much handle anything on a pizza except peppers. The internet equals herd mentality. Yes, it does. White sauce and peas is where you draw the line for weird pizzas. White sauce and peas. I wouldn't put peas on a pizza. I've had like Alfredo sauce on a pizza. That was pretty good. Like a chicken bacon ranch or a chicken Alfredo bacon something pizza. can't think of anything off the top of my head like no anchovies on pizza but there used to be this uh, it's like a, a gas station it's like a bodega right um, across the street from where I was training in the army one time and they had this like cheeseburger pizza and you could get a bacon cheeseburger on a pizza basically Your youngest girl will only eat white sauce pizza like the weirdos they are. <laughs> or your girl and youngest will only eat white sauce pizza like the weirdos they are. You like a good salty red sauce, herb heavy. I've actually done that. Good garlic sauce on the pizza crust topped with a bit of chicken and a whole host of veggies. Pea pods were amongst the toppings. I don't know if that's okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Oh no. No, don't do that either. What are you doing? Stupid ass phone. Okay. All right. I just got about 20 different meme emails all at the same time. And uh, they were all saying that an email I sent out, which was an automatic email, couldn't be delivered. So that means that someone put in a the wrong email address or a fake email address, which whatever, but Anyway, sweet Pizza Hut sauce is nasty stuff. Pizza Hut in general is nasty. You know what? I used to read books just so that I could eat Pizza Hut. Agreed, you prefer Boston pizza. We don't have that down here. We've got a couple pizza places in town that are okay. Um, but the other night, I tried to order a couple pieces of pizza from Pizza Hut just to get, just because, right? Pizza Hut is as expensive, it's, it's a little less expensive than the quote unquote good pizzas, right? So it's, we were using them for a while because I was tired. I was tired of paying like, 70 bucks for two two pies okay then you go to pizza hut and it's damn near the same cost with delivery and everything and then their app stopped working in my area um completely so we called Domino's, and they were at the house inside of 15 minutes right so i don't know if they just had pizza and a delivery driver ready to go and it wasn't good pizza or anything, but pizza, pizza's like sex, okay? When it's good, it's great. And when it's bad, it's still pretty good. So I was just happy that it didn't take 45 minutes to deliver or an hour or an hour and a half, whatever. And I was like, you know what? It may not be the best pizza I've ever had, but it's, it's okay. And the kid is fed. And I'm hungry, or I'm not hungry anymore, so. They have a deluxe wine that's to die for. Extra onions, no cheese, but drizzled with honey. Honey on pizza? What? What is this? What is going on here? 
We've got a semi-local chain around here called Rosati's. That's really good. Yeah, we have, I don't know, I don't know how many spots they have. Um, but Mark, Mark Ruffalo's from Kenosha, Wisconsin, and he's got, there's a lot of Ruffalo's here, and there's a couple of Ruffalo's pizza in the area. Their pizza's okay. Spent three years in an Italian restaurant as head cook. You love making your own pizzas, stone ovens, homemade dough, fresh ground mixed cheese, deep fried some mozzarella sticks, and roll them into the crust for amazing stuffed crust. Nice. Deep fried mozzarella sticks stuffed crust pizza. That is amazing. <laughs> oh, I want to try it right now. I can feel, I can feel the arteries around my heart clogging just saying those words out loud. Honey drizzle on onion, ham, and pineapple. Okay, that would be interesting, but no sauce. I'm not going to... I would try that. I would try that. I, I see what, like, the combo flavors are. That. All right. Oh, so I went... <laughs> I busted my ass today. It's why you have gout. Um, we went and got groceries. Oh my God, you guys, I, I almost killed a bitch today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I'm at the grocery store. I'm at the grocery store and we, we just got done. We pulled up in line. I had my stuff on the conveyor belt and, <clears throat> um, I had stuff like three quarters of the way up. Okay. And the lady in front of me was waiting for some guys to go get her a specific product that was that had a coupon, right? And so we were waiting behind her um, to, to get her item, and then we were going to move forward. And uh, so I tell my son to wait there, okay? And I go and I look in the fridge. I was looking for an Arizona iced tea, right? Um... I didn't find one, but I checked like three, four fridges down. So like three, four aisles down. And in that amount of time that I had stepped away, right, this uh, older lady, right, like she wasn't ancient, but um, she was not young, okay? Probably, I don't know, 50s, 60s, late, late 50s, 60s. Um, cut in front of my son while he was there because I wasn't there I'm sure she wouldn't have cut had I been standing there but she left her cart behind my kid grabbed whatever she was buying and put it in front of all of our stuff and I got back and I see her standing there and I, I about murdered a bitch so anyway I didn't say anything I smile and nod, smile and nod. It's like I'm not going to jail over someone cutting in line. And then, to make matters worse, I get home, and as I'm getting home, um, or as I'm, I'm home, loading groceries into the house, and it's like my, my last round of groceries. So, of course, I'm all loaded up with groceries, okay? And we have a coating, like an epoxy coating on our garage floor. And it's wet outside. And it gets very slick when it gets wet. And my foot hit the stairs at an odd angle and came out from under me. And I just fell straight fucking forward. Fortunately, I didn't land on any groceries. And I was largely okay. Just my pride was hurt. But yeah, I straight up busted my ass today. Try the new Delicio Croissant Crust. It's yummy. Retail rage is a real thing. For real. For real. It's like, what? You know, you just cut in front of a little kid. Anyway. Ouch. Yeah. I mean, it hurt for a second. I'm okay. I, I didn't fall all the way to the ground because I was going up like 
two to three stairs. So like I hit my knee and then I hit my elbow and you know, it wasn't terrible, but I sure as shit slipped. Yeah, I mean, it was just a bitch move. Like, he's standing there. He's seven. He doesn't know what's going on. And I wasn't right there. It's, I mean, our stuff was already on the conveyor belt. It was very clear that the lady in front of us was waiting to be checked out. Like, all her stuff was checked out. And this person just walks up and sets her stuff on the front quarter of the conveyor belt. and Like, she owns the place, you know? And then it goes back to the, uh, you can tell, it's, it's, uh, who, who was the guy? Andrew W.K. And the shopping cart theory. People who put their shopping carts back are, like, and this is a general statement, but people who put their shopping carts back are, you know, Sociable people to be around and people who don't are horrible people She left her shopping cart behind my kid, you know damn well she wouldn't have done that if you were there. No fuck. No Part of my language A lot of curse words tonight You know and it's I mean I don't even think he really noticed to be honest so it's not like she had any interaction with him or that it affected him in any way because had that been the case, ooh, I would not be here right now. Down at the station getting fingerprinted. But, you know, he doesn't know. Proof that folks won't follow the rules if there is no consequences, shopping cart theory. Thank you. You're the guy that will take extra ones with you if you're in your path. I, I make it simple for myself because um, I'm probably a person that uh, wouldn't follow rules if there weren't any consequences. Um, and so I just park next to the shopping cart stall. That way I can just push it right in and I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to contemplate whether or not I'm a good or bad person because I return my shopping cart. Let the hate flow through you and your journey to the dark side will be complete. My journey to the dark side was complete a long time ago. Anyway, I'm trying to be a better, brighter person so that everybody wants to be around me. I am. I There was a point in time when I was just a curmudgeonly bastard. Um, and that was when I realized that being in the army sucked and it made life miserable. There's a line of carts that employees prepping to take back in the store. You'll add your cart to that. I remember working, grabbing carts out of the parking lot, having to collect them from all over, and push these giant rows of carts into the store and now these kids have like this they load it up onto a robot that pushes them all like that is bullshit <laughs> I want a robot that pushes all my line of carts in maybe that's what I'll go do I should go be a cart boy for Meyer or something If you really want the experience, you should the local grocery store is hiring. Yeah. 
It's like, I have experience doing that. I'll put that on my resume. Former cart boy. Only thing you don't like here at your grocery store is that too many people dump their carts in the handicap stalls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See a lot of that. Now, is that is that other handicapped people leaving their cart there because they can't physically take it to another, to a cart stall or take it back into the store? Or... Is it like just a dumping ground? So on the one hand, I can uh, understand a little bit if you are not physically capable of returning your cart, then okay. I don't think that that makes you uh, a bad person. minutes no oh, we got more than 15 minutes worth of work to do that's for sure okay now that's able-bodied people who are too, too lazy to walk 20 feet yeah I feel you I do We have a couple grocery stores around here. Um, we got a festival, a Meyer, and a pick and save. And Meyer was just like kinda on the way home. Oh, and we have Aldi's too. Aldi, we have Aldi. I've been told that it's not a plural Aldi's, it's just an Aldi. Excuse me. And so I go to Meyer because it was kind of on the way home from my kid's school, right? Then I was spending like two, three, four hundred bucks there on groceries. It's like, what is going on? Then I went to a festival and I got the same amount of food and it was 150 bucks. I was like, there's no way I'm shopping anywhere else because pick and save was m more expensive than Meyer. All right, Barb, have a good night. Thanks for hanging out. There was one time that my ex said he was leaving the cart in the middle of the parking lot so the cart people would have a job. He just about smacked him in the next week. And now he's your ex. That's like saying, I throw trash on the ground so that garbage men have a job. <laughs> I, let, I make the world a little bit more terrible for other people for employment. I dump plastics in the ocean so that we can hire people to take it out. <laughs> you have such stellar taste in men. I like I light forest fires so that people can have jobs planting trees. I break windows so that the window maker can have a fucking window to replace. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> wow 
I burn down houses so that construction workers have a job. <laughs> Sorry. These keep popping up in my head. And now I can't stop. I steal items from stores so that insurance companies can hire actuary can hire people to make actuary tables. <laughs> Making you reaffirm your will to be single. Yeah, I mean I feel you, I do. I did find something interesting at the grocery store. It was a uh, Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Sauce. Frank's Red Hot brand Buffalo Sauce on like chicken tenders or something. And Renee's a big fan of Frank's Red Hot, so I got them. Tried to, tried to grab her something for once because she's always trying out new stuff it's like a frozen dinner meal kind of thing so I don't know how good it's going to be but hopefully it'll taste good come on French Red Hot and Liquid Butter 50-50 was the mix of choice for many restaurants for the wing sauce here in New Hampshire. Yeah. Frank's Red Hot 50-50 Butter. French Red Hot Liquid Butter. Ah, yeah, okay. I read that right. I that read right. I that read right too. There's a ring on my last row that I didn't place. No wonder it looks funny. There we go. I went been gone newfound school, learn well me there. That's right. I mean, all right. It is. It is honestly. It's difficult enough to sit here on camera, working on a project, think of stuff to say, and then have it say and have it come out my mouth correctly. 
I'm going to do a taco scramble tonight. Egg scramble with leftover taco meat, tossing some peppers, onions, and olives topped with cheese and taco sauce. Hell yeah. My kids get a soft shell taco that he's not going to eat in the fridge. It's going to get gone maybe before bedtime. I don't know. It depends on how late I stay up. I've been eyeballing it for ever since it was put in the fridge. Wing sauce. That brings up some memories. Uh, the new Dorito shells are your favorite, family's favorite taco shells. Cool Rancher, outstanding. I'll have to. Are these. Um, can you get those at Taco Bell? Or do you have to buy them? I'm not opposed to buying them. I just. Like, I thought I saw like a Dorito shell taco. And I guess the new the, the Mexican pizza is making a comeback, so. I legitimately like Taco Bell. I don't eat there a lot. Um, I grew up where we had Jack in the Box. And, and instead of going to Taco Bell, we went to Taco John's. And then in Texas, we had Whataburger. And that's, that's Mexican food. It was just like different... Um, excuse me. Different uh, fast food chains that I don't have around here, right? Like Whataburger is almost exclusively Texas. Jack in the Box, I guess they were here, and then they had a big E. coli outbreak, and they lost a bunch of money uh, in this area. Nobody went there anymore, so they closed all of them down. Um. But we went to, I never went to Taco Bell as a kid, really. Went to Taco John's, which had these, uh, what the hell are they called? They called them potato olés, right? Which were like disc, disc shaped, um, the hell, what is the word? When you fry a potato hash browns it's like a little dish disc shaped hash brown right and they're fucking delicious you're gonna buy the box make it home you wish we had waffle house closer to you denny's is not a good denny's is not a good substitute for anything denny's is god awful okay i've never been to a waffle house so i wouldn't know um but i will go to ihop before i go to denny's and i won't eat at ihop but i was thinking the other day around here i've got Burger King, Taco Bell, Wendy's, and McDonald's. That's that's it. There's no there's no other fast food joint, really. Right. Um. And so, I, I've taken a liking to Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. It's just decent. And then, whenever I go there, I always think of Demolition Man. He had a friend who called the Waffle House the Awful Waffle. There's still Taco John's in Waukesha, and they still have potato lays. What? You're messing with me. That's not true. There's a potato. Uh, po uh, uh, Taco John's in Waukesha, Wisconsin. I guess me and the family are going on a road trip. But yeah, anytime I go to Taco John's I, or Taco Bell, I think of Demolition Man. Which reminds me that I've been meaning to watch that movie again. Not messing with me, it's on Grand Avenue. Sweet. I will look that up. Demolition Man. It's got Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, um... 
Dennis Leary, great, uh, Benjamin Bratt, and Sandra Bullock, like back when she was young. Um, and anyway, if you haven't seen the movie, it's a great movie. All right. And I tell my kid every time we get Taco John's, yeah, yeah, Taco John's wins the wins the fast food wars. It's like, what are the fast food wars? I'm like, I don't know, but they're coming. They're they're on their way. It it is a fun movie, and it it accurately portrayed a lot of like how people behave today. Like, you wouldn't think of it as prophetic, um, but, you know, in a lot of ways, it's really... My favorite line in the whole movie is, mm, that's a really good rat burger. I think it was the Franchise Wars, but I don't think you could stomach their version of the oldies. Yeah, right. Again. Oops, I did it again. I didn't put this ring here, and I don't know the rest of that song or anything, but I know that part. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and watch it again. I own it. Idiocracy is another good movie. Oh, yeah, Idiocracy is a great movie. <laughs> Idiocracy is a great movie that is horrendously accurate and, uh, you know, reveals itself to be more and more prophetic each and every day. To a point that it's uh, pretty scary, if I do say so myself. I don't think I own Idiocracy, though. I think I had to rent it. Why don't I own that? should not have seen it as a playbook model and learned to prevent it no no people watched it and then they ran with the script that yeah It's not, it's not Aliens, it's not Blade Runner, it's not, uh, it's, another, it's not Star Trek, you know, it's fucking Idiocracy and Demolition Man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Think Musk bought Twitter to make us into Wally? Interesting. Oh, speaking of Musk, 
he was at the Met Gala last night. Um, and I don't know anything about the Met Gala except that someone had a scale mail hat while they were there. And it was posted in the, the main chain mail group. It was actually a pretty badass hat, right? But it's pretty, like, I don't give a shit about the Met Gala, but, you know, whenever a big event like that and you've got some someone wearing a scale mail headpiece or a scale mail hat, like, that's cool, you know? Props to those who are getting that stuff done. Remind you to scale Star Trek Queen in outfit in red versus blue. You saw that? You, you squeed. Yeah, I didn't uh, see who made it. I don't know if anybody knew, but I guess badass. I don't know what a Star Trek Gween in outfit is. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I know what Star Trek is, but I don't know what a Gween in is. I'm not I'm not actually a Star Trek fan. Um didn't grow up watching it. Didn't uh never spend any time. I know who William Shatner is and I know who Jean-Luc Picard is, uh, and I know who the Borg is, I know who Worf is, I've seen many of the movies, um, so in that regards, I'm a fan, but Whoopi played her, oh, okay, um, trying to think of the Star Trek character played by Whoopi, I can see where you're coming from, it does kind of look like that. Yeah, Star Trek's one of those things that I can't get into it as an adult, right? Any of it. I can watch the, the movies. I think they're okay. You know, they're worth watching more than once. Um, but the show, any of the series of the shows, I can't watch them at all. Yeah, that could be very Gwenin-ish. Is that like Ronin-ish? Gwenin-ish. The secret, the secret of Ronin-ish. Is that about silkies? I don't remember. <clears throat> I think it is. <clears throat> been binging Star Trek Enterprise the last couple of days I you know I mean I jumped into sci-fi fantasy stuff about 13 14 and it's about all I'm really into now uh, and I just I was never ever exposed to it as a kid my, my parents didn't watch it so And then I've tried. I've tried like Huluing episodes. I don't know. People have given me recommendations on what to start, like The Next Generation or Deep Space Nine or whatever. And I, I couldn't get into any of them. All right, guys. That's, uh, that's one. Oh, 
Thank you, John. Yeah. That hat definitely has some of that Guinan style vibed to it. All right. All right. That's that's I think that's that might be bigger than the last one I made. I don't remember. Let's see here. One, two, three. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 rings across, and you count them by 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Is that 8 and a half? And then you... What is the formula for cubes? 8 by 8 by 8. I'm asking John. I know we've talked about this before and had a lengthy discussion about it. I don't remember. I should have written it down. That would be a useful piece of information to have. Maybe I should add that to the app as a section. Just how to count rings in a cube. Eight by eight by eight times three. 15, 1,500 rings. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. And these are rings from Wally up at Chain Reaction there in Canada. 18 gauge, 1 8 rings. They're, this is perfect for a jelly cube. I love them. Where are we at here? Hour 10. All right, guys. Well, I was thinking we'd finish this earlier and get started on another project, but that is uh, going to have to be it for tonight. I've got lots more work to do tomorrow, so I've got to get got to get to bed and get my sleep. Someone did like this slow mo video of their. Jelly cube. I'm going to try and recreate that. In fact, I'm going to try and do that right now. Anyway. All right, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out. I do appreciate you being here. Tell all your friends and family about the wonderful things that Chainmail has done for, in your life and how they should uh, pick it up and you know come join us here. Um, appreciate you being here, all your contributions and commentary. I do enjoy seeing each and every one of your names every night. Um, I'll be back on tomorrow, 9 to 10. And uh, I'm going to make some changes to the uh, app. I don't know when I'll get to them. Um, and then we're we're working on designs and uh, trying to finish up some of the projects that I started two months ago. So, um, you know, we're just going to keep going until we can't go anymore. All right. You guys have been... Wonderful. I will talk to you all later. You guys all have a wonderful night. Bye.